Would it be nice if you could have a protective layer on your computer to prevent bad things from happening when you run strange things from the internet or open strange attachments? You can with Windows Sandbox, which is something that not a lot of people are talking about. I'm kind of surprised. So Windows Sandbox has been built into Windows 10 since the May uh, 1903 update, and it's pretty widely available. I mean, you can use the Windows Sandbox extension um, pretty much on any recent hardware. Any hardware that has hardware virtualization extensions. So if you're already using Hyper-V or something like that, then chances are it's already enabled. To enable it, you just go to Windows Features, and then Windows Sandbox is there. If it's grayed out and you mouse over it, it might say, oh, hardware virtualization extensions are not enabled. Uh, you'll need to enable those. And to enable those, usually you go into your BIOS. Uh, Windows, it's a virtualization option, it might be called. Well, you've got a bunch of different options, but um, it's usually under like hardware virtualization. It just depends on where it is in your BIOS. We've got guides for that on the level one forum. On the AMD side, um, it might be called a SVM, Secure Virtual Machine, or something like that. And you'll need to to toggle that option on. A lot of the time in AMD BIOSes, it's not on by default. Really recent Intel machines, it's not on by default. But on middle-aged Intel machines, it's, it's on by default. It just depends. So it's like a virtual machine, but it doesn't have any of the setup steps. So if you were to try to accomplish the same thing with a virtual machine, on Windows, what you would do is you would have something like Hyper-V or VirtualVox, and you configure, you know, your virtualization software, and then you configure how much RAM you want your virtual machine to use, and storage, and some other parameters, and then you boot it up, and then it's just a blank screen, it's like, you know, can't boot, and then you have to go to your installation media, and actually install an operating system inside the virtual machine, and it, it takes a few steps to set it up, and then if something bad happens inside that virtual machine, you gotta set it up again, or save a snapshot before you attempt to do something inside the virtual machine so that if something goes wrong, you can restore. Windows Sandbox is more akin to a container technology, um, like Docker, pair virtualization type technology, where it's the same Windows install, it's the same executables, it's really even the same kernel in memory. Um, so this is a very lightweight way to get a disposable Windows desktop on top of your regular Windows desktop. So you just run the application and it gives you a completely plain vanilla installation of Windows 10 that's identical to your host Windows 10 installation in terms of like the bare files, but there are no programs installed. There's there's nothing. Uh, there is a way to, to automatically configure programs, but I'll get to that in a second. And so when you run the program, you can access the clipboard and that's about it. Network access by default. There's also GPU acceleration, so you can play a video back, for example, inside the sandbox, and it's okay. This is like incognito mode in a browser, but it's incognito mode for the entire operating system, which is really handy. So if you need to get a file in here, you can copy-paste it from the clipboard, but there is a way to configure this, uh, you know, sort of sandboxed copy of Windows to be able to access certain directories on your host computer. I don't recommend sharing, you know, your full, like, my documents directory or a common directory, but you can make some, you know, sec secure drop-off directories to be able to use Windows Sandbox to move files back and forth. Now, I mentioned configuration and options and GPU acceleration and that kind of thing. There's actually a Windows blog post that goes into the types of details that are available for this Windows Sandbox, and it turns out you can create WSB files or Windows Sandbox, WSB stands for Windows Sandbox. And these Sandbox files configure some parameters around this Windows Sandbox in terms of like, do you want to do uh, para virtualization for your GPU so it's kind of accelerated video driver for your uh, sandboxed copy of Windows. And this is uh, a fast enough video driver that you could do video streaming, maybe Steam in home streaming, but nothing really like super computationally intensive. It's not really what it's meant for. So playing a video game, no. But streaming video, yeah, you can do that. It works reasonably well um, on resolutions up to 4K. It can get a little choppy. It helps if you have the very newest version of drivers installed. And you can also configure some other parameters like uh, file system paths uh, where you have a shared directory. 
and you can configure some limitations like okay we want to give the sandbox no network access whatsoever because the sandbox could access your your network so if you have an older nas for example that's running like the smb v1 protocol and you get some really nasty malware running on the sandbox before you have a chance to kill it from the sandbox it might be able to escape the sandbox and get onto your network which is not a great situation so if you're downloading random crap from the internet or somebody has sent you a suspect attachment you can save it and open it inside this sandbox and if anything is untoward with that attachment or file as soon as you close the sandbox it's immediately removed from the system it's deleted to shredded there's not really any trace of it the windows insider build actually gives you some more options with this windows sandbox you can have multiple instances of the windows sandbox and you can also make the windows sandbox a little bit more persistent one of the options in that configuration file i was, I was mentioning is a script to run at startup so you can automatically install programs like office 365 or Visual Studio Code, or you know any kind of forensic analysis tools that you might use if you're using this for security. So the Windows Sandbox is uh, very flexible and very handy in terms of the different things that you could do. It, it actually turns out that it's really super handy to have a Windows Sandbox on your machine where you can quickly spin up a copy of Windows, do something, and then when you close it, you know all traces of what you did are destroyed. Basically, uh, it's you know it's great for. I've had pretty good luck even training, you know, some of the frontline office workers that are dealing with, you know, like the people that are typically the ones that have to deal with like the phishing attempts inside a corporation, having them do stuff, having sort of incorporating the Windows sandbox thing into their workflow has not been an impossible training exercise. So some pretty good luck with that overall. So the Windows sandbox really is a, is a welcome addition to Windows. And I hope that we see this feature continue to grow and continue to have more features added to it because it really is a super handy feature of Windows for a lot of these use cases that I've described. I hope that Microsoft doesn't take that out in the future. You know, Shadow Copy, Shadow Copy was an amazing, amazing piece of functionality. And it's still kind of there in Windows 10 Pro, but they really hobbled it in ways that frustrate the crap out of me. Oh, and if you're thinking about resources and stuff like that, because it's a container, it's actually much lighter weight than a full virtual machine. So a full virtual machine, when you're running that Hyper-V virtual machine, you know, it's using four or eight gigs of memory. And there is a little bit of, <laughs> there is a little bit of magic that the system manager can do to try to address that memory usage. But uh, this Windows sandbox thing works fine, even on very limited, you know, four core machines and four gig of RAM. Uh, you know, eight gigs is recommended by Microsoft, but because it's pair of virtualized, it's not truly a full VM. There's not true full separation between Windows on the host and Windows in the sandbox. But the copies of stuff that Windows in the sandbox has access to are read only. So if something tries to change something in memory or something tries to change something on the, on the disk that it sees in the container, it's not gonna be permitted to or the change is only gonna exist inside the sandbox and that change is going to be reverted as soon as the sandbox closes. The number one feature that I would love to see in Windows Sandbox is whenever something makes a change to the system, like say I've got a, a shareware application I'm gonna download or I'm looking for you know, programs to help with remodeling and I'm looking for like a free or an open source or a low cost program, I might try it in the sandbox environment first, you know, to sort of kick the tires and try it and see if it's a good program before I install it. Cause you know, you install something and then you uninstall it and there's remnants left behind. I would love it if the sandbox application had a feature where you could install an application and then see what has changed inside the sandbox as a result of that installation. All the files, registry keys, everything. It seems like that would be pretty easy to implement, but I haven't seen that. And that would be super handy. It's been a quick introduction, a quick look at the Windows sandbox functionality. If you figure out something clever to do with it, share in the comments below, or even better, share on the forum at forum.level1text.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. So yeah, 